purists and these corrupt Arabs came together to plot. Then their enemies saw them fighting among themselves and ended up throwing both of them out of Spain. We understood. Now, John Jackson's lecture dealt with those periods in the world when we were in charge of other people's countries and how humanely we treated them in comparison to how in inhumanely we were treated when they came to our land. We have to look at it, but to make a comparison between what was happening. The second lecture was given by the uh, second wild man of the group, Radical. Well, no, no, you knew me at 23. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a wild you? <laughs> All right, so I gave the second lecture. <laughs> My lecture was called An Inquiry into the Racial Identity of Jesus Christ. John Jackson had written a pamphlet called The African Origins of the Legends of the Garden of Eden, showing exactly where the Jews were. Jews stole it from. And is Jesus Christ a Negro? Out of the controversy of the lecture and the research, I then wrote the most anthologized, the most reprinted short story ever done by a black writer. Published all over the world. A lot of people read it, even though I was right. I was on the same clock and wrote it. The boy who painted Christ black. <laughs> What I'm trying to tell you of the consciousness of us, that generation of my generation, that early generation, I'm still talking on the subject now. On, are we ready for the 21st century? I'm beginning with an assessment of South Africa and misconception about South Africa. I want to look at the whole misconception about that there is a possibility that there is a partnership between whites and blacks in South Africa. There is no possibility of cooperation for nationhood between whites and blacks in South Africa. There is no out short of revolution and the Africans must win. You must stop all your sentimental attachment an assumption that your human value can be transferred to someone else. After all, we're the same, we all the same people, you know, under God. <laughs> and what did this God give him? Give him our land. He's got 80, 90% of the land. The African has got less than 12% of the land. And he's, and he's the bulk of the population. <laughs> If his God tolerates this, then his God is open to question. <laughs> Once you understand the nature of African spirituality and how far codified that spirituality into a religion and created a God of fire and vengeance, you realize that Africa created no gods of vengeance. They created a God of love. They created no God to curse people. They created a God who had toleration. They created a God who played no favorites against people. And these foreigners came, misunderstood African spirituality, codified it into religion, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and created a God that indulged their mud. Now, are we big enough? to go back to our concept of God as against their concept of God? Are we strong enough to suffer the embarrassment of understanding that we are the only people in the world who worship a God that has been assigned to us that we did not choose? <laughs> When a 
people conquer you, they colonize your culture to the point where they make you feel ashamed of your culture. And that greatest accomplishment, they make you laugh at your God and worship back. Then they don't have to build no jails for you. Then they have to deny your culture and they do not understand that in African culture there was no word for jail because no one had ever gone to one. No word for orphanage because no one ever thrown away any children. No word for old people's home, senior citizens' home. And no one ever threw away grandma and grandpa. Look at it. That was a civilization. That was a civilization. And what you have in the West is a mechanization. What was whites done in South Africa? They created a mechanical thing in law of civilization. What's happening to the African is the most uncivilized and the most unchristian. Then why are Christian white people doing it? Because Christian white people have converted the African spirituality into a political instrument and turned it against the African. If you understand me real well, in the final analysis, you're going to start belonging to these Greek fraternities because the Greeks mm -hmm. have. They change it around and now sell the African back for the African creator. Mm -hmm. People are always selling us books, lost books that we didn't lose in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for holy grail that we declared holy in our land. And they took it out of our land and declared it holy in another land. We had lost no holy grail in Jerusalem. We lost one in Abydos, our spiritual city, our Jerusalem, that existed 3,000 years before that mixture of a city that they called Jerusalem. I'm not going away from the Bible, I'm going to the truth and the Bible. And at the same time, didn't work. Small French settlement, Huguenots, didn't work. The Portuguese settlement there, and they got shipwrecked off the coast of what is now Namibia. What did work and why did it work? How indeed did the white people come to South Africa in the first place? What was that intent? And if you understand that intent, you will understand what you got to do. You understand what is possible under the given circumstances. And I'm saying partnership is not possible given these circumstances. Because the intent of Europeans, the larger intent, was to control the world by any means necessary. And it doesn't matter what, whether the European is a communist, a capitalist, a Baptist, a Protestant, all of them, no exception, wish to rule the world by any means necessary. You're talking all your liberalism and partnership and your concept of goodness. He ain't paying no attention to that. He <laughs> wouldn't be found practicing democracy and Christianity. It's impractical. And his way he looks at the world. It's perfectly logical the way you look at the world. And you have to understand. Now, I was fortunate enough to read a manuscript of a book by a great South African scholar who 
unfortunately died in Ithaca, New York, only a few weeks ago. Congressman Biden. Congress has been writing a history of South Africa ever since ever, all the years I have known him. And finally, he was finishing it. Had stomach problems and some other problems, and unfortunately died. Only one of the many black men who finished great works and died before it was published, and sometimes leaving relatives who didn't know how to handle it. But in his opening chapter, he reads the diary of these boys on that ship. That tells you their intent. They were planning to take over the land and the people. Planning it on the boat before they saw the people. Now, the Dutch East India Company, the Dutch West India Company, deserves a lecture in itself. <coughs> because some of the, the Africans had supported some people in Spain called the Hebrews once, Hebrews sometimes, now called Jews. The Africans had supported them, they became the grandee, the money managers of Spain. When the Africans lost Spain, they went, some of them went to Holland. But they found the Dutch East India and the Dutch West India Company. It's the early managerial setup for the slave trade. They had turned on their African benefactors, and this was not the first time. Now they went into the business. Those people once protected by Africa went in the business of settling. Europe was looking for roots to the east, looking for the spices and the sweets of Asia, not Africa at first. But they needed a filling station. He needed a place for the ship to stop and refuel and refresh on their way to the markets of India and China. Finally, there were some Boers, there weren't Boers there, Dutch, Calvinists. And understand Calvinism or you're not going to understand South African whites of today. This was a breakaway branch of Christianity. Remember, after Martin Luther, who was a breakaway branch, who broke away from the Catholics, Martin then found Lutheran. Certain religious alternatives began to emerge in Europe. Calvinism was another religious alternative. Some of the crass of the bigotry of the church, of, of one church, went over into the other. I don't know why they would pull away from the Catholic Church if they're going to pull away and do the same thing, <coughs> only in a different way. Now these Calvinists said they are ordained by God to look over the lesser breed in order to enslave you, all they have to do is to say that you are a lesser breed and that God told them to do it. And that God approved of In the 15th and the 16th century, when Europe came out into the broader world, it not only began to colonize the world, it began to colonize information about the world. In the most disastrous of all their colonizations that's still intact, they colonized the image of God. That's right. They took away your image and they stole you that image. That's right. And they did not want any God of mercy, any God of peace. They created a God that breathed fire 